everybody welcome back to my channel for those of you that are new welcome I'm unapologetically mocha and I cover all things craft and crochet from craft tutorials to unboxings and reviews of yarn and craft supplies if it's crafty it's my jam so welcome and you probably caught my intro of that lovely shawl that's called the let it flow summer shawl and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how you can make it yourself now that particular shawl I made with Kobu Oops. That's what I turned it it's a it's by Lion brand and it's 50% cotton and 50% bamboo, thus Kobu. Kobu, Ko for cotton, boo for bamboo. Um, the specs, we can see them right there. It's three and a half uh, ounces, 100 grams, 232 yards, or 212 meters. It's a number three, just over, see? It's a three weight. And it calls for a four millimeter hook. But as you will see in this pattern, I took some liberties, but that'll make sense later. And I did it in the color steel blue and taupe. I used roughly three skeins of the steel blue and about a third of a skein of the taupe. The shawl in its size that I made is roughly 60 inches in width and 30 inches in length and it's very flowy and I love it and I figured I'll go ahead and give you guys the knowledge to make it yourself. So if you're ready to get started let's go. Okay, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not using the colors that I use in the shawl. First of all, I don't have a lot enough left probably to do the swatch. And second, I figured a lighter color would probably show up better for the stitches to show up better. So I'm still using Kobu, but this is actually the color silver. And I am using a 4 millimeter. Now if I turn it around crochet hook. This is my tulip. So, first thing we have to do is make the slip knot on which you will put your hook. So this is how I do mine. I wrap it around my finger, take the loop off my finger, and then pull the yarn up through the loop and tighten it. Take it down camera. Put it on the hook through the loop, pull it tight. Get some yarn here. Try not to camera over. I don't advise that. Okay. Now, the first thing you're going to do, camera focus is chain four. One, two, three, four. Now you're going to slip stitch into the first chain. No really you're going to slip stitch into the first chain. This is kind of hard to do because I'm actually behind my camera doing this. So I can't totally see what I'm doing and looking in the, the monitor throws me off. Okay, now I'm going to start it over again. And I'm just going to look at what I'm doing and not at the camera. That. And that. 
on their bird and pull it that tight. One, two, three, four. Put stitch into the first. What in the world? Man, this is hard. Okay, there we go. Now, chain one. And you're going to put three double crochets into the middle of this oblong thing you just made. Because it's not really a circle. It's just some chains that you slip stitch together. Now you're going to chain two and then do three more double crochets in that same oblong weird space. Weave in that tail while you're doing it. That's great. If not, don't worry about it. You can always weave it in later. Okay. Now. Okay. One, two, three. Chain two. Then one, two, and three. Okay. <coughs> so now you're going to chain one and turn your work. And in this first chain space right here, you're going to put three double crochets. Double crochet in the next chain. And then double crochet in the, the chain after that. And now you have to chain two space. So you're going to do two double crochets. into the chain space. Two. Chain two. And then two more double crochets in that same chain space. And now you're going to put one double crochet in the next two chains. And then in the final chain, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to put three double crochets. 
kind of gets this side sometimes. Really? Ooh, this is really hard to see from this angle. I normally do my tutorials from uh, the camera that is above me, but for this one, I couldn't get a good uh, focus on the stitches, so I'm doing the camera behind me, my hands are in front of it, and that's a really awkward way to crochet. So I'm looking around the camera to see what I'm doing, and I'm trying to make sure my hands stay on camera so you can see what I'm doing. And as you just saw, I, I failed at that miserably. My bad. Okay. This is what we have so far. And this is round three. Okay, round four. So, we're going to end round three. Oh, I need my hands on here. By chaining one, turning our work, and we're going to put three double crochets in this first hook, uh, first chain. First hook, wow. Like so. If you hear some noise in the background, I apologize. That is my fan that's running. Um, my studio is not air conditioned, so I have a fan. And if I don't have it on, I am literally melting and absolutely miserable. So, try it again. My apologies in advance, but it just can't be avoided. It's either shoot with the fan on, or never shoot in the summer. And, you know, when you're trying to build a YouTube channel, you kind of need to shoot all year round, so... Sorry. Okay, there's the three double crochets in the first chain. Now we're going to put a double crochet in each chain all the way up the side till we get to the, um, two chain... Two... What? The, the top. Um, the chain two space. Wow. Yeah, I know crochet terminology. Of course I do. Yeah, uh huh. But yeah, we're just doing a crochet, a double crochet in each of these chains. Whew. Heat's getting to me. Till we get to the chain two space. And don't make sure you you don't skip this actual double crochet that's next to the chain two space. It's easy to miss if you're just breezing along and you're not paying complete attention if like you've gone into the zone. Okay, now in the chain two space we're going to do like we did last time. Two double crochet. Chain two. Really? It is really hard to do this behind the camera. And then two more double crochets. And now we're going back down the side, and again, make sure you don't skip the double crochet next to the chain 2 space. Y'all don't want to hear me hum or sing or anything like that. Double crochet. I'm going to go down to the last chain of the row. Yeah, 
That's the last train. And then this. Can you guess what we're gonna do? Can you? Can you? You're probably right. Three double crochets in the last chain. And that is round four. Let's get ready for round five. Okay, we are now on to round five. And round five is the first row of the pattern repeat. I don't think I mentioned it. it's a six pattern repeat. A six, round, a six row repeat and row f round five is the start of it. So we're going to end four like we all like we end every round with a chain one and a turn of the work. And row five is actually just a repeat of what we did in row four. So we're going to put three double crochets. in the first chain and then a double crochet in each chain I'm going to go all the way up the side to the chain 2 space and I will meet you when we get up here. So go ahead and pause and finish the side and we'll come back for the chain 2 space. Okay, I'm at the the chains the chain right before the chain 2 space. Okay, I want to make sure that you didn't skip it. And overlook it. So there's a double crochet into that space. And now two double crochets in the chain two. Chain two. And then two more double crochets. And now we're going to go back down the side. Don't forget that that double crochet right next to the chain two space. Otherwise, we'll have a gap. And we're going to go all the way back down the side, and I'll meet you at the last chain on this side. So put a double crochet in each of these, and I'll see you at the bottom. Okay, I'm at the last chain. It's kind of bad, so you kind of got to look for it sometimes. It's right there. Well, three double crochets into this. And that is row five. Now we're on to row six. Okay, so row six, we're going to add our first cute little element. So we're going to chain one and row in round five, like we always do, turn our work, 
and we're going to start this row like we do all the other rows. Three double crochets in the first chain. So, for round six, we're going to do front post double crochets. So, and even that you're unfamiliar with this, you yarn over and you go into the behind the first double crochet and come out the other side. So, you want it to stand up. Then you're going to yarn over. Pull that behind it, and now you've got three uh, loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, show you again. Yarn over. Okay, you gotta be careful because some of these, the next one will hide a little bit. Go behind the double crochet from the previous row. Yarn over, pull the yarn behind it, three chains on your hook. Yarn over, pull two, yarn over, pull through two. And see how it makes the chain raise up. So we're going to do this all the way across until we get to the chain two space. So go ahead and you can pause the video and I'll make sure you have to chain two space. Okay, I am at the last double crochet before the chain two space. So I'll make sure you grab that because it definitely wants to hide. So pull that up, yarn over, pull through, do two, do two. Now in the chain 2 space, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing with it since we started this. We're going to put 2 double crochets. We're going to chain 2. And put in 2 more double crochets. Okay, so just so you know, no matter what kind of row repeat or what kind of stitch we, we put in a row, three things are always going to remain the same. Hang on, I'm getting more yarn. You are always going to start the row with three double crochets. In the first chain, we're always going to do two double crochet, chain two, do double cro two double crochet in the chain space, and we're always going to end with three double crochets in the last chain. So, no matter what stitch we're doing on a row or around, those three things will always be the same. Three in the first chain, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in the chain two space, and three double crochets in the last chain of the hook. Okay, so we just did the two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in the chain two space, and now we're ready to resume 
with our front post double crochets and we will do that all the way down the side till we get to the last up the last chain in which we will put three double crochets so I will see you at the bottom okay and this is what it looks like at the end of round six. Don't hook out. But this is technically the back. If you flip it over, you now have this cool ridge. And that's from the front post double crochets. So now you have a front and a back. This is the front. And this is the back. That'll be important later. And now we're going to start row or round seven. You're two thirds of the way through the, the pattern repeat. Good job. Are you excited? Okay, so round seven is basically just a repeat of round five so we're going to chain one because we're finishing round six turn our work three double crochets I can't see in the first chain And then a double crochet in each chain all the way up to the chain two. And then two double crochet, chain two, and two more double crochets in the chain two space. And then double crochets in the chains coming back down the other side. And then three double crochets in the last chain of the row. So, I think you guys can handle that. So, I will see you at the end of row 7. Okay, and that is what row 7 looks like. Now, we're about to start row 8. Uh, newsflash, it's just like row 7. So, do 3 double crochets in the first chain. Double crochet all the way to the chain 2 space. To do 2 double crochets, chain 2, 2 more double crochets in the chain space. Come all the way back down this side. And put three double crochets in the last chain of the row. So go ahead and do that. Pause the video. And we will come back and chat for a minute. Okay. And that's round eight. That's the back. Here's the front. Get out of there. Yarn, get away. That's what it's looking like so far. Just a little uh, side note. If you ever get lost as to what row you're on, count the holes. For every row that we do, since we do a, a, a chain two space in each one, there's going to leave a gap in each row. So if you count the holes, you'll be able to figure out what row we're on. So, for instance, up? 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So, you know, if you ever get stuck and you can't remember what row you're on, count the holes and I'll tell you where we're going. And now, speaking of going somewhere, we're on to round nine. Okay, we will start like we always do. Chain in row eight, we're going to chain one, turn our work. Three double crochets in the first chain. Okay, now we're going another fun little pattern or stitch for round nine. And basically, we're going to chain two, skip two, so one, two, and then double crochet in the next space. The next chain, I mean. Now I'm going to chain two, skip two, one, two, double crochet in the next chain. Chain two, skip two, one, two. Double crochet into the next chain. So you're going to chain two, skip two, double crochet into the next double crochet chain, all the way up to the chain two space at the top. So I'm go ahead and pause the video and do that, and I'll meet you at the, the chain two space. Okay. I have two chain two chains left before the chain two space. So I'm going to chain two, skip both, and get directly into the chain two space. Okay, and that's going to be my first double crochet of the chain 2 space. So let's add the second. Chain 2. Two double crochets. Still in the chain 2 space. You know the drill. Now I'm going to chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next chain. I'm going to do this all the way back down until we get to the last chain. I'll meet you there. Okay, so we're down. I'm down to my last chain two, which I've done. And you'll see that there's one, two, three, four left. So we're going to chain two, skip two. But instead of going into this one here, we're going to the last chain on the hook, or last chain of the row. Do that double crochet. 
in this sense it's the last I did that in the wrong one they're saying going in the last I put them in the next to last let me look one two three yeah that's in the wrong one Do the double do the double crochet in the last chain of the hook, and then since it's the last chain, you have to do two more because you're supposed to do three in the last chain. It's one, well, two technically, and then three. And that is row nine. I only have one more to go before we will have completed the first pattern repeat. Are you excited? I'm excited. This has been a bear to film, so yeah, I'm real excited. But yes, we are off to row round row, whichever one you want to call it, 10. Okay, so, we start like we always do. In row 9, we're going to chain 1, turn our work. I'm running out of space here, so it's getting a little big. And we're going to start row 10 like we started every other row. Three double crochets. And the first chain. Any more yarn? Hang on. Okay. That was two. Okay, double crochet in the next double crochet. And then the next one. And now we're at our first chain space. We're going to put two double crochets in the space. Sorry, my hands were off the camp off the screen again, my bad. And then one double crochet in the top of this double crochet. Then double crochet, two double crochets in the next space. Then double crochet in the top of the next double crochet. Double crochet in the next, two double crochet in the next space. Double crochet in the top of the next double crochet. In the top. And we're going to do that all the way up the side till we get to the chain two space. And I will see you up there. Okay, so I just did the two double crochets in the last space here. 
and just wanted to make sure you put double crochets in the top of all of these double crochets before the chain two space. Hmm. Putting crocheting a lot. My hands are getting tired and uh, I'm just slipping stitches. So have any of y'all worked with code blue before? What do you think of it? This is uh, like uh, the second or third project I've made with it and I love it. Okay, so I've put the top, uh, the, those two double crochets on the top of those d double crochets. Now I'm going to the chain two space, which we do what we always do. Two double crochets. Chain two. Two more double crochets. I like how it flows. I'm, I'm back to talking about Kobu. Um, it's very flowy. It's got some beautiful drape. Um, I really enjoy working with it. Some people don't like it because they say it's splitty, but I really don't have a problem with that. Okay, so there's the chain two, double crochet, chain two space, and don't forget double crochet in the top of these two double crochets. Well, yeah, my hands are tired. I've been crocheting up a storm, making a lot of shawls. I'm going to donate a couple of them to this organization called Wings that a fellow YouTuber, Rose Likes Crochet, works with. So I've been busting out shawls and stuff along with everything else I've been working on. Okay, so now two in this space. You guys working on anything fun? Other than this, of course. What else you got going on? And double crochet in the top of this double crochet. And just do that all the way back down to the end. And I will see you at the bottom. And there it is. Row 10 is completed. And so is the first... Uh full repeat of the pattern. So, starting with row 11, you will basically repeat row 5. Then row 12 will repeat row 6, and on and on and on. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go off camera, and I'm going to do rows 11 and 12, because I want to show you something that might clear up Something you've probably been pondering the whole time we've been doing this. So, go ahead if you want to. Go ahead and, and crochet along. Again, row 11 is a repeat of row 5. Which is... Turn it over. This row right... Crochet hook. This row right here. And then row 6, or what would be row 12 be a repeat of row 6 which is this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, I have finished rows 11 and 12 aka rows repeat rows of 5 and 6 and this is what we're looking at. But this is the back. Flip it over. See? Okay, so I want to explain something. You might have been wondering why we were doing so many repeats of, the, of basically just straight up crochet rows. Well, this is why. Okay, you see how row six. It's the, it's the front post double crochet, right? Now, in order to get the next front post double crochets to line up, you have to add an extra row. 
otherwise when you go to do the next front post double crochet it's going to be on the other side so because to get it to sit up like this you have to work it in the back so you work from back to front that's why it shows up on the front the next row is worked on the front so that would be seven row eight was worked in the back row nine was worked in the front row ten right here was worked in the back I'm sorry yeah the back row eleven was worked in the front and row twelve was worked in the back which is why these are standing up now technically I could have kept out the extra row and done back post double crochets but here's the deal I hate back back post double crochets I would rather do a king size blanket in single crochet than do a single row of, black, of back post double crochet so my solution was to add a row now if you don't want to add the row and you still want this ridge you can do back post double crochets and you'll still get this but that's up to you me personally I'd rather have the extra row yes I hate back post double crochets that much anyway so you might also notice that these look these two rows look a little larger well that's because I changed up my hook oh, I'm gonna help if I actually did this like the way so you can see it okay so in the pattern I start with a four so all this through rope through ten is is a four millimeter hook but then for the next two pattern row re repeats wow that's hard to say I switched it up to a 5.5 .5 millimeter hook and then to make it even more interesting after I did the uh, two r repeat pattern repeats in the five and a half I did the last two with a seven so you don't have to do that you could do the entire shawl in a four or you could do like part of it with a four and part of it with a five and a half I just like how the, the shawl flows when I increase the hook size with at when every couple of repeats so again from the beginning to the end of the first uh, pattern I used the four for the second and third pattern row repeats I used the five and a half and then for the fourth and the fifth I used a seven because the straw that's pictured is actually five repeats so like I said the beginning and the first one was a four the second and the third was a five and a half the fourth and the fifth were a seven again you don't have to do it that way if you do it with just a four it's going to be more straight if you do it with a four and a five and a half it's going to be a little flowier but not as flurry as if you actually went ahead and did the last two pattern row repeats with a seven but again totally up to you but that I think is it I think you've seen enough of this to be able to work this on your own if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll have a free version of this pattern on my blog which is called these three things by mocha but if if you want a pattern that is a full written pattern with 
color photos for each step, then that's going to be on sale on my Etsy, which is these three things boutique, and on Ravelry. And with that, I'm going to head out of here. Thanks for sticking with me. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And hit the bell icon so that you know when I upload. I try to upload uh, once a week. I'm shooting for two, but the way my schedule is going right now, I'm sticking with once a week. Um, got a lot of stuff in the pipeline for you. More patterns, um, some stitch reviews, um, some yarn hauls, some yarn reviews. Some fun stuff coming up. So, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications on so you know the next time I upload. And with that, I'm unapologetically Mocha. Thanks for stopping, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!